today. Um, I am honored to be here for the Global Women of Tech Conference. Uh, it's such a remarkable agenda and speaker series that you guys put on. Uh, I'm especially excited to come and talk about this topic because it's a little bit outside of the day-to-day -day business part. It's, it's kind of the, the heart and soul behind of the work itself. Um, I've titled it, you know, Mobilizing Movement for Good, specifically and Accelerating Sustainability. And I'd like to start today by asking everyone a question about whether or not you simply believe in yourself. And what does that mean to you? When you think about the word believe, uh, a lot of times people think externally. Do you believe in something? Do you believe something's going to happen? Do you believe something in the future, something very aspirational? But if you actually stop and think and start with yourself, that's what you have to bring to the table. That's what you're in control of. And when I couple that belief of what you have, whether it's yourself or these aspirational, inspirational thoughts with that possibility of what is out there, fill in the believe in yourself, believe in what yourself plus what's possible. That's really sort of the backbone of, of today's conversation. Uh, and where, where I would love to just take a moment uh, for all of us to kind of pause, reflect, and have a bit of a, a discussion about what that looks like and what passion and purpose can look like in a work, uh, in a workplace, in, in a career. Uh, before we kick off, I actually have a video, I hope it works, that uh, kind of helps me when I think about uh, big picture and uh, belief. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partners' technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco. The bridge to possible. Perfect. So I'm actually coming to you today from Cisco's most recent opening, grand opening building here in Atlanta. It is Cisco's most sustainable building. Um, and, and when we put together videos like that and we think about what, what it means to power an inclusive future for all, it sounds like a lot of fuzzy buzzwords and fluff, but it actually drives so much about what we do as a company, as an organization. And for me personally, um, I've been able to connect those things to a much bigger passion uh, and purpose in my day-to-day -day job. So let me take a step back and, and again, kind of bring it back to, is there a thread, a commonality across the work that you do that makes you really happy? That emotes that sort of feeling of, wow, I'm in my groove, right? It's a passion project or something that you have such a belief in, right? That it drives how you do things and it's just better. When I think about something as simple as building teams and solving really tough problems and then applying that to something that's like just a very urgent need, it's, it's remarkable at, at how fast the pace of change and how much can be accelerated. So I'll use some very, very basic uh, examples here. If you, if you remember uh, maybe a time when Wi-Fi connectivity and the internet was not everywhere. When I started my career, I was in consulting. And if you remember coffee shops like Starbucks always had really good Wi-Fi. You would have to log in and get to multiple layers. And I can't tell you the number of times I remember spending a good number of, of minutes, maybe 10, 20 minutes, going around trying to find just the right angle in an airport, in a hotel, in, in a mall, squatting, 
putting my laptop in just the right place to try to get connectivity at odd hours or in weird places. And if I think today, technology has enabled so much connectivity that I never really worry about being connected anywhere I go. And maybe that dates me. Uh, maybe you have your own example that comes to mind. But part of what has always brought me back to why technology drives so much of my purpose and my passion at my core is because technology has helped us solve some of the world's hardest problems. And when you think about ex existential challenges and big things that are facing all of us today, climate change is near top of that list, right? The word sustainability means a lot of things to a lot of people. And so when I think about weaving that in, combining with a background of problem solving, a passion for building teams, an understanding of you know, where are we going with all of this and trying to define that purpose. And if we can drive to that purpose, a lot of times these days around sustainability, that purpose is kind of built around these net zero goals. But maybe the purpose is as something as simple as getting Wi-Fi connectivity. Maybe that purpose is something as simple as trying to figure out how do we use this new technology called, you know, AI in the last session for good. There's so many things at, at a group team level, at an organization level, at an industry level that can drive our purpose. And if we align to that and you couple it with what you bring to the table, right, what sort of emotes that excitement and that happiness for you, all of a sudden you start to see people coming to the table to solve a common problem with a lot more uh, umph, satisfaction, and productivity. And I think what's so fascinating about how fast our world is changing today when you think about coming, you know, the years that we were in lockdown with COVID, the years coming out of it, the growth of new industries, the the changing and dynamics of policy and stimulus dollars, we're going to start to see tremendous change in how we do work, where we do work, what industries are growing and why. Uh, and I think it's just such an amazing time to sort of stop and, 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 and pause and think about how do you fit into that? And are you really bringing your best self to your work, your day-to-day -day career? Uh, and I think a lot of those things, when you combine that sort of passion and purpose, it becomes a lot easier um, to do things like accelerating a goal around sustainability. And so for me, this intersection of having a history of really enjoying solving some of the toughest problems, knowing that sustainability is becoming more and more in the forefront of business itself and not so much buried in, in an environmental report, and then understanding how operationally we can build all of this at scale, all of a sudden I started to reimagine my own career and how I would take the pivot from the, from the, the roles that I've had in, in years past, the teams that I've been part of, the learnings I've had living in different places and visiting different places and really bringing that together. And so, you know, today what, what, I, what I hope to do is, is bring a little bit, you know, if, you know, even if that ignites just a little bit for your own self to take a pause and think about what are, what are the things that really drive you and motivate you? What are your passions? And then how do you apply that in a way, you know, we're all here with, you know, women in tech. How do we work across all of the different people sitting at the table? How do we create a seat of our own? How do we lean in and work with a very diverse group, whether it be generational or multidisciplinary? And how do you do that to solve some of the, the world's toughest challenges, whether it's for sustainability or not? I guarantee there's a part of it that you're going to want to consider around sustainability. But if you think about what technology does and the role technology plays, a lot of it is underpinned with change. And being a change agent and being a change um, you know, steward for, for the groups and the communities and the ecosystems that you're part of becomes such a fascinating way to continue to bring out more and more of that passion and purpose together in your day-to-day -day work. I'd like to uh, take you across the Atlantic Ocean um, and what you, the, the the video I just shared with you kind of talked about how you can imagine what's possible when you bring these things together. I'd like to show you actually a very real life example of how we used sustainability as a North Star for our purpose and, and then couple that with a complete 
portfolio of technology in order to accelerate um, a place that many people would have said, you know, it's been like that forever. It's just a little neighborhood outside of central London. Um, what I think you'll see in this customer example is what might feel very futuristic, but I assure you is very real. Mabel Group manages, owns and develops approximately 9 million square foot of multi-use space. And we have around about 1,100 homes for build to rent. It's changed a lot over the last few years. Mainly, obviously, people think of Canary Wharf as an office development where we've actually now innovated and brought in a lot of living space. We've built some beautiful apartments that are utilising the river and the waterside. Through the pandemic, we've managed to utilise our space in a different way, so more alfresco dining. We're now back to pre-pandemic numbers, and we're really seeing the estate thrive. We've obviously got the mixed use in our residential apartments, and that's really seeing people now work live and thrive at Canary Wharf. We've got a large estate, it's over 100 acres with lots of green parks, um, over 300 shops and restaurants, and Wi-Fi 6 was a good offering to be able to deal with the density when we have our award-winning events such as concerts, uh, winter lights. Cisco were really helping to, to make sure we could deliver an enhanced customer experience for those events. Wood Wharf is our newest development. We've got big parks and greenery within there. So we've got pop-ups and paddleboard to help enhance that and to help keep that connectivity for our, our customers. We've utilized open roaming to be able to make sure that our customers can seamlessly get reliable, secure Wi-Fi. We've been working with Cisco for some time now so as a partnership and really wanted to enhance our 5G offering. Our new app is going to really give some insight to how our customers are using our estate to really enhance what our offering is, to give our customers a better understanding of what we have around Canary Wharf and what we have to offer. So they can really go and utilise the go boats or the paddle board and give us that sort of what is a success and what we need to do more on. We're going to utilise the Cisco Wi-Fi 6 and open roaming to allow the app to automatically onboard to our secure Wi-Fi which will allow, again, seamless connectivity for our, our, our customers. We've recently launched Made4, which is going to be offering premium, flexible office space, fully kitted out. And again, where we've actually now supplied them with Cisco's Wi-Fi 6 throughout the building to really enhance what we can offer our tenants. Cisco's DNA spaces and the data analytics that we're going to get from that is really going to give us sort of rich insight to how our malls and how our green parks are being used and we really hope this insight will be able to get us to, to make sure those, those spaces are used in the best, most efficient way and given our customers the best experience. I love, I love watching that because while you might say, well, that's just one example, it's in Canary Wharf, uh, here very closer to the U.S. and home, they're building a size three to, uh, two to three times that uh, in a place called National Landing right outside of Washington, D.C., and so as I think about what you believe in and what your purpose is, understand what passions you bring to the table and how you can bring it really all together for whether, again, it doesn't matter what stage you are in your career or what level you are in your organization, understand that you have so many unique gifts that you can bring. And if you can just understand and articulate what those things are, believe in a common goal and purpose, uh, your passions will come out, and and I hope that um, I hope that through technology and and finding some common goals across all of that, uh, that we have an opportunity to cross paths, work together, and continue to learn from one another. Thank you so much for having me, uh, and take care. Hi, Denise. Thank you so much. Um, I will remove this so you can see everyone again here. We did have one question for you and we do have a couple minutes if you don't mind. Okay, great. Um, so the question was, how can organizations accelerate their sustainability efforts and create a movement for good? So it's, I mean, how much time do you have, right? I think a lot of it starts from the top. A lot of, there has been a lot of what I call green hearts across every organization. You can find them. But what you really need is you need leadership and, and buy-in from the very top. We're seeing a lot of board of directors, a lot of uh, executive leadership teams and at, at every level making mandates. So if there is a goal, if there is a common purpose, start to pull on the specific metrics on how the plans and the executions 
um, is going to be measured up from there. I think you both need a centralized place as well as a distributed model because with sustainability, it's an actual transformation of the entire business. It's not a special project. So you, for every company, you need to find that balance. But I think there is a balance between what I call the carrot and the stick. The carrot is business growth and opportunity. The stick is regulatory rules, compliance, and reporting. All the fun stuff that everyone wants to talk about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's a follow-up question to this, Denise, which is what are some of the key challenges and opportunities associated with doing this, with kind of finding that those acceleration opportunities? Absolutely. I mean, where to start? I think a big part of it is with any kind of change, a lot of people will ask for more resources, investment, right? Most companies are in tightening mode. That becomes difficult. Um, I think articulating a very specific plan forward and an execution path on how to get there, it requires buy-in, again, from those top leadership levels. <coughs> um, getting credible, making sure that whatever you're saying is, in fact, uh, credible in the market. There's a lot of greenwashing out there. How do you make sure that what you're saying and what you're doing is actually backed up with credible, real, valuable data? And so I think there is a balance of how do you bring along an entire company? How do you mobilize an entire movement? But how do you do that with still continuing to make small baby steps forward a little bit at a time? Because that's what it takes, right? You can't wait for the big one silver bullet solution where you flip a switch and it's all good. Um, there genuinely is going to be a little bit of work at a time to chip away at it. And I think there's a balance of, of both leadership as well as very specific, um, planful, executable plans. Thank you for that, that meaningful response to the question on the spot there, Denise. Very much appreciated. And thank you for being here with us today. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.